Hello folks, how you doing? So they did it. They finally released the NVIDIA 4000 Super Series. Uh, so let's break it all down. Let's see what cards we've got. We've got three cards as we thought. We've got the NVIDIA 4080 Super. We've got the 4070 Ti Super. And yep, they, they really named it that. And we've got the uh, 4070 Super. So before we dive into it, we're going to break it all down. We're going to see what's what. But before we do, could I ask, if you haven't already, could you please consider hitting the subscribe button? We're trying to uh, get this channel monetized over here. And we've hit all the requirements that YouTube wants us to, except for the subscribe account. We're really struggling on that one. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting that sub button, that would be much appreciated. That helps out a ton. And uh, of course, it means you'll get notified of any future videos. And of course, it's looking highly likely I'm going to be getting one of these cards. And when I do, you can bet we'll be testing it all out here on the channel. So get subbed for that. So let's start with the uh, the 4080 Super and let's break it down a little bit. Let's click into here. So first things first, this is going to take the place of the non-Super 4080. So I think the 4080 non-Super is probably going to just go away quietly. And this is going to take its place. This is a fully enabled AD103 chip, which means you know, there's no cutting down or anything like that. This is what the AD103 chip was always meant to be. In real terms, I we're probably going to see up to a 5% performance gain over the non-Super 4080 which isn't bad, um, but I really think this card is less of a performance bump and more of a we're trying to reduce the price of the 4080 by giving you a new card that's similar but different and also cheaper and it allows us to basically reduce the price of the 4080 without leaving egg on our face, if that makes sense. Um, it's a bit of a weird way of doing it, but it you know, in terms of optics, it's much better for NVIDIA to come out with something new that's technically different, that's a little bit faster, that they can price cheaper versus being like, okay, fine, we'll reduce the 4080. And yeah, that looks bad for them. So however they decided to do it, um, this is definitely welcome news. I mean, MSRP in the States of 999 down from 1199. So it's $200 off here in the UK coming in at 959. So that's, uh, it's not bad. I mean, you, <laughs> I guarantee you, there's going to be people that are like, it should be $800, it should be $700. I'm not buying it unless, it, okay, well, that's fine. But yeah, you've got to take into account market factors. Okay, let's have a quick look at the performance data. Now, I would urge you to be very cautious when looking at these graphs because obviously they're coming straight from NVIDIA and NVIDIA are going to make them look as appealing as they possibly can. Look at the small print here. So running at 4K resolution, highest game settings, DLSS super resolution, performance mode. Now, I would never run a game in performance mode if I can help it. I would generally go quality if I'm going to use DLSS. DLSS ray reconstruction, DLSS frame generation on RTX 40 series. So that's the important bit, the frame generation. So frame generation is okay for certain games. If you're playing a game like Call of Duty Warzone, if you're playing a game like Apex Legends, Counter-Strike 2, not that Counter-Strike 2 has frame gen as far as I know, but if it did, you probably wouldn't want to turn it on. Because the whole idea of those games is that they're, they're twitchy shooters, they're reactive, you want to be as quick as you can to you know lock onto your enemy. Frame generation inherently introduces latency. Massive oversimplification, but if you imagine the game engine generates frame number one, and then the game engine generates frame number two, then NVIDIA frame generation looks at those two frames, makes a third frame, and slots it into the middle, giving you a total of three frames. But of course, that all takes time therefore you get latency. However, I would say in single player titles, you can kind of get away with it. I'm a big flight simmer. In fact, I have a whole flight sim YouTube channel. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if any of you by chance are flight simmers. And in a game like flight sim, it's okay because really not a lot's happening on the screen. Um, the, you know, just clouds very slowly moving past the window. So, I mean, it makes total sense in that scenario, but for something like Call of Duty, I would, I would give it a, a hard pass. So that's just a general word of warning. Just be careful when you're looking at these graphs because, of course, you've got the 3080 Ti here in the kind of the light grey and you look at the 4080 next to it, you're like, flipping heck, that's loads of improvement. But actually, if you were to do it apples to apples, just pure rasterization versus pure rasterization, you wouldn't be getting as big as gains as these. But anyway, I digress. Alrighty, so here you can see you've got the RTX 4070 Ti Super starting at 769. So again, in the UK, 769 instead of $799, which is nice. I honestly thought they would just take the dollar price, 799 and make that pounds. So good for us here in the UK. So similar to what's going on with the 4080 Super, the 4070 Ti Super is going to take the place of the current 4070 Ti. As per my previous video, I'll leave a little uh, link up there in the top right. This is the card I think that interests me the most. Why? Because it's got the 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's up from 12 that we got on the non-super model. And crucially, 
and I've, I'm sounding like a broken record I know from the last video but it's on a 256 bit bus memory bus so rather than the 192 we have on the 4070 4070 Ti the 4070 Ti Super has a 256 bit bus and that is massive when you're dealing with 4k titles um, and even to an extent 1440p I guess um, it basically means that those textures have got a much wider bus to get in and out of memory so that you're not going to get clogged up get, it's all well and good having all this VRAM but unless you can get the stuff in and out of it in a timely fashion it kind of begs the question what is the point of it um, it feels very much to me you know this is going to be a nice performance bump it feels very much like we're approaching 4080 non-super performance it's not going to get us all the way there but you kind of get the sense we're not a million miles away. And at $799, and as we've just seen here, $769 in pounds, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And it's nice to see that we're getting more performance at the same price point rather than you know the old the old NVIDIA trick of more performance for more money, which it doesn't it's generally not how the industry works. And again, we've uh, <laughs> we've got these graphs again. Like be careful with these graphs. Um I wouldn't read too much into them. It, you know, it's got frame gen all over it, DLSS all over it. I would wait for the reviews for like the hardware unbox, the gamers Nexus, the J's Two Cents. Go, go and check out those guys when uh, when the time comes, when the actual reviews come, and they'll they'll give you the you know the pure numbers, apples to apples comparisons. This is very much yeah, they're benchmarks, but they're very much in marketing land. And I would urge you to <laughs> exercise extreme caution when looking at all this sort of stuff. Um, but nevertheless, I think this is going to be an interesting card. I can't, I keep coming back to it. It's like it's either going to be this one or I'm going to cave or I'm going to get the 4080 Super. I feel like this one is probably the sensible play. But yeah, watch watch this space. Okay, working our way down to the bottom of the stack. Um, well, I say bottom, it's still a really nice card. The RTX 4070 Super 579 here in the UK coming January 17th. Um, again, 599 in dollars if you're in the US. So this one's interesting because this is not replacing the non-super 4070 in fact that card's going to stick around and get a price cut nvidia have been kind of throwing around terms such as faster than a 3090 um not sure on that i mean in certain circumstances i'm sure it is but yeah it's going to depend a lot on the game and the resolution higher resolutions once you start getting up near to 4k i think the 3090 is going to have the edge simply because of the uh, the memory and the memory bandwidth again that 3090 has got a big fat memory bus which kind of goes back to my point about the 4070 Ti Super it's one thing I like about it is that it's got a bigger memory bus but it does seem like good uh, performance to price in terms of the performance up uplift it's getting over the non-super 4070 but I think for me personally the memory sticking at 12 gig and on a 192 bit bus kind of kind of rules it out for me a little bit um, if we click over to the 4070 Super graph again just just be careful just be careful looking at these graphs i mean look here it's got like the rtx 3070 which is actually the card i currently have here kind of represented as the the one x this is like the baseline and like a 3.4 x uh, but of course that's with dlss and ray tracing and all these tricks basically that's going to kill a 3070 having like all the ray tracing on on a game like that um so yeah they can hit these multipliers but it's, it's not without its trade-offs with DLSS frame generation stuff like that so for release dates um, it's all kind of taking place in January but weirdly they're starting with the 4070 Super which surprised me normally they lead with like the biggest card and then you know walk their way down the stack but this time we're starting with the 4070 Super on January the 17th followed by the 4070 Ti Super January 24th and then finally on the 4080 Super on January 31st I mean that's going to keep the reviewers on their toes for one thing <laughs> um, Thank you very much for watching, folks. If you haven't already, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subs on this channel, and that will get us over the line to get us monetized. We've got all the other watch hour requirements from prior videos. Um, just missing the subs. It'll also mean you won't miss out on any future videos, and hopefully I'm going to be getting one of these cards. I'm thinking I keep coming back to the 4070 Ti Super, um, but yeah, we'll be checking it out in great depth here on the channel once it's... Uh, once it's in my hands and we'll uh, we'll do some benchmarks, we'll take it out for a spin. I'm happy to take requests as well. Um, if you've got any particular games, as long as I'm able to get hold of it at a reasonable price, I don't mind having a look at some certain stuff and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Um, until then though, take the very best care of yourselves. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you in the next one.